Here is a nice animated tab switcher. So you have this in Gator at the bottom, which goes to the current active tab. And then you can render whatever you want to render in the rest of the page. This is a component you can easily find in your libraries out there. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this component, which will also teach you a couple of CSS or JavaScript tips. All right, we're going to be starting with this. We have all of the tabs here. Currently, if I click, nothing happens. I have this div with a class, an ID of tabs, and then I have four tabs here well actually five and each of these buttons have a class of tab for the first button i put the active class but we're going to move this active class to any button that is clicked and we're going to do some javascript which i'll come to in a second and for the style i have some color variables here and for the tabs i have all of these styles which styles the tabs like this and currently the tab has this color and I add a transition for the color. And the first thing I can do is to style the tab when the tab is active. So for this, I'm gonna say color, and then I'm going to have blue 800. So currently the active class is on this. So this will have this color. Now I wanna put the indicator that is under the active tab. And for that, I'm going to do it on the tabs element. Instead of putting the indicator on each tab i'm going to put it on the tabs element because that way the tabs element can control what point the indicator is and we can have those animations because if we should put it on each tab then it will probably be difficult to animate that indicator from one tab to another tab so since all of the tabs have this as the parent we can put the indicator on here and i'm going to do that with the after sudo element i have videos on the after and before sudo element i'll link it below you can check it out if you want to learn more so for this i'll give this a position of absolute i also need to add my empty content i can give this a width of 10 pixels a height of 2 pixels background color of blue border top left radius of 2 pixels and border top right radius of 2 pixels then I can give the left 20 pixels. I'm also going to add a transition on the left and also on the width because we're going to change them later. And now if I should refresh, you can see we have the indicator at the top here, but that is not where I want it to be. So I'm going to take it to the bottom and I'm going to have minus one pixel so that it is just on the gray line. Okay, so what we have, we can control the left of the indicator with this so if the left is 100 pixels the indicator is here and we can also control the width so if the width is 100 pixels then you can see how long the indicator is but this is not where we're going to be controlling these things we'll actually be controlling it from javascript now for this left and this width i'm going to have custom properties which i'm going to declare on the tabs element itself so here i'm going to call this indicator offset i could also call it indicator left but let me just keep it as offset half 10 pixels and then indicator width i'm just going to have 10 pixels let's just say these are the default and then down here for the width in the after pseudo element i'm going to use indicator width and then for the left i'm going to use indicator offset and let me put this together like this now we're going to change these custom properties from the javascript world if i should refresh you can see the offset here for the left and we have this for the width first thing i'm going to do in this javascript is to get the tabs parent which is going to be document.get element by id and i get this tabs element then i'm going to get all of the tabs using document.query selector all and i get every element with a class of tab then i'm going to paste this code here and what i'm doing is i'm going to loop through all of the tabs and on each of the tabs i'm going to add the click event listener and the handler for that listener the first thing it does is to remove the active class from all of the tabs and then it's going to add the active class to the clicked tab so now if i come here and i click on this this becomes active click on this this becomes active click on this this has the active class and the styles are applied but then one more thing i want to do is to also move this indicator to the element that is currently clicked for that i'm going to create a function called updates active indicator 
and this is going to take an active element and there are a couple of things i'm going to do in this function but the idea of this function is that it's going to get this active element and then it's going to calculate the width of the element so that it knows what the width of the indicator would be and then to also calculate how far off that element is from the beginning of the container so for example this element is going to calculate the offset to be from this point to this point the first thing i'm going to do is to get the position of the tabs parent itself so here i'm going to say tabs parent left distance and this is going to be tabs parent dot get bounding client rect dot left if you're not familiar with the get bounding client rect method on elements just think of this function as it returns the rectangle dimensions of an element and on that rectangle you can find how far off the element is from the top of the viewport from the left of the viewport you can also find where the bottom of the element is from the top of the viewport which is going to be on the bottom property and on the right property you can find the distance from the left of the viewport to the right dimension here so for this i'm getting the tabs parent left distance and i'm assessing the left property which is going to be the distance from the beginning of the viewport to this point here where the tabs parent started from now here in the update active indicator the first thing i'm going to do is to get the element size and for this i'm going to do active element dot get bounding client rect dot width then i'm also going to get the active element distance which is still going to be active element dot get bounding client rect dot left instead of calling these two times i can actually just call it once and the structure so i'm going to comment that part so i get the width and i have a variable for this element size and i have the left and i have a variable for this element left distance so this element left distance for example for configuration this is going to be the distance from the beginning of the viewport to this point where configuration started and for hooks this is going to be the distance of the beginning of the viewport to this point where hooks started then i can now get the distance from parent which is going to be the element left distance minus the tabs parent left distance so by doing this now i can get the distance from here to api from here to configuration from here to errors and so on for the rest so now that i have the distance from the tabs parent i can now update my custom properties so for the tabs parent i'm going to say dot style dot set property and then i'm going to set the property of indicator offset and this is going to have the value distance from parent. And here I'm going to set the indicator width to be the element size. Okay, now that I have this, I can now call this function update active indicator. Since we have the first button as active, I'm going to call this function update active indicator. And I'm going to pass the first tabs using tabs with the zero index. And now if I should refresh, you can see that the offset is calculated and the width is calculated based on the dimension of the first element. But I'm also going to call the function when the active tab changes. So here I'm going to call updates active indicator and then I'm going to pass this tab when it is clicked. So now when we refresh at first, we have the first active class with this offset and this width. But then when I click on this, you can see that the width of the indicator grows to fit the size of the element and as well the offset, which is the distance from this point to the point where the tab started. And if I click on hooks, the same thing, components, errors, configuration, API, the same thing. And now I've been able to build this with just HTML, CSS and JavaScript. The JavaScript is handling the interactions part where we change the active class to the currently active tab. And as well, we're calculating the dimensions of each tab, which will determine the dimensions of the indicator and then with the css we have these custom properties that we can change from the javascript world but now there is one problem the problem is that when we refresh this page the dimensions for the tabs parent is calculated so everything is working fine but then when we increase the viewport the dimension of the tabs parent still stays the same and now if i should click on configuration you see we now have this messing up because we changed the viewport so the tabs parent distance no longer matches what the actual dimensions currently is so to fix this instead of keeping this 
outside the object active indicator function we are going to put it inside this function so that whenever this function is called it would get the current tabs parent left distance and everything should work fine so now if i should refresh everything is working fine and if i should increase the size of the screen everything is still working fine and if i should reduce the size of the screen let me zoom out then everything is still working fine